What does it mean to be Choctaw? Is it the color of your skin? Your blood quantum? How you were raised? I don't think any one person can really answer that because being Choctaw means something different to everyone. There's Miss Melissa Sue and, and Michael Happy Folsom there. Yeah, that's when we were skinny too. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> when I'm searching for answers to life's tough questions, I often seek counsel with one of our beloved elders. So I paid a visit to Sue Folsom. Look at that beautiful beadwork and the, yeah. the, the sash. And yeah, she did that on a loom. And you in some traditional dress here? Well, my mom made these for us. So it says 1970 Choctaw Princess. Wow, you Melissa Sue Williams. I didn't know I was Melissa. sitting here with, <laughs> was here with royalty. And, Nobody and, knows the name Melissa, <laughs> did they not? except HR. <laughs> Looking through Sue's family album, I was reminded of my own childhood memories growing up in southeastern Oklahoma. I was curious about the difference between Sue's traditional upbringing and those who didn't share that same cultural experience. It's interesting, I had a cousin that came from California, and of course he's 132nd Choctaw. And the, the question that he had, he said, you know, I'm really struggling, am I Choctaw? And I thought, well, what makes you think you're not Choctaw? And he said, because, you know, I'm only a 32nd. And he said, and I grew up in California, so I don't really know the traditional ways, I don't know the mm -hmm. cultural ways. You know, if he's just 132nd Choctaw, but he's proud of that 132nd Choctaw, then that's okay, you know. As long as you are proud of who you are and, and proud that you are Choctaw. That was one my conversation I wanted to have with you because I know you grew up in a very traditional home, them speaking the original mm -hmm. language. Me and my younger brother, um, we heard Choctaw in the family but they wouldn't let us uh, speak back to them in Choctaw because my two oldest sisters couldn't even speak English when they started to school. We had to answer in English so that we wouldn't have the problems they were having at, that my older sisters did in school. I remember my grandpa said that he did not want um, my mom to endure some of the things that he, mm -hmm. he did. You know, so being made fun of going to school and not being able to speak English, but he taught me more of the language. And I was telling you before that now my son speaks more than, than I do, and then hopefully my grandsons will speak more than him. You know, it's carrying it on from one generation to another that keeps that moving, that keeps it alive. Well, you know, and I think, Sue, about us as Choctaws, we all kind of come from a, a fragmented, if you will, cultural past. You know, most people don't know about the Indian relocation program where yeah. our tribal members after World War II ended up taking jobs, being moved mm -hmm. out to the West. Now people are starting to make the migration back. And so yeah. I keep saying it's kind of like these, it becomes full circle. It's exciting to hear about the people coming home and reconnecting with their families. I think just by being near each other, we're able to strengthen our cultural bonds. I was curious to know how Sue's keeping the culture alive in her family. How do you teach that to your kids and to your grandkids, that, that culture, to make sure that they continue the legacy? Well, I'm very fortunate that my grandkids live close. Just the other night I was humming one of our songs. When he asked me, he said, what are you humming? And he's seven years old and I said, oh, it's the Choctaw's hymn. He said, well, that really is pretty, you know. He knew it wasn't something that he he, he would hear us sing in English, some of the English hymns, but he, he knew it was different. So. Well, you know, I think you remind me again of my, I have a great niece and she's the eighth Choctaw, blonde headed, blue eyed, mm -hmm. and with my mom, she stayed with my mom all the time mm -hmm. when she was little bitty. 
she would listen to some of the hymns and things like mm -hmm. that. And she used to ask her, I said, uh, Abigail said, so how much chalk are you? She goes, I'm full blood. <laughs> I mean, and she, but she meant it. And now as blood quantum diminishes and citizenship becomes an issue, then I think people hopefully remembers that it is our traditional ways and practices that makes them Choctaw, that makes them proud. Well, you know, like your cous cousin, yes. it? if he's proud that he's just, you know, a little bit, but proud of that, you know, his Choctaw blood, then that's, that's okay. But as long as he, you know, feels, knows that he's Choctaw, he may say a little, you know, or, you know, learn a little bit about the language or just read. And you know that way that can make him more proud of what part of the Choctaw he is and what he knows about that part. And at least being vocal about it, you know, don't be ashamed anymore. And the identity that I can say, I am Choctaw, Choctasia Oki. I met with Christine Davidson, owner of Fry Bread Express. Maybe we'll put you in there to work. Huh? That's all I, know to do. <laughs> I joined the crew inside the food truck to get hands-on experience serving Indian tacos. How do we keep our culture, history, how do you keep culture and history alive and live those values out? The Choctaw spirit, it just, it, I want to keep it alive through our food. My grandmother, she always welcomed people with food traditional values, things that were instilled in me as in, um, you know, taking care of your elders. If somebody's hungry, feed them. We think during doing this, we can share our food, our passion for, oh man, they love these Indian tacos. Yes. People come from all over to get these. I love it. <laughs> it's very <really> good. <laughs> and we just are inspired by, by the faith and family that we have and what we've got going on. We decided we would go ahead and just keep busy with it and schedule more events and just stay with what we wanted to do was just, like I said, have our freedom and be with our kids, our grandkids, spend more time with them and family, family, family oriented. We want to build memories while we can before they get too old. Something I'm very excited about is the opening of the Choctaw Cultural Center. I took a tour of the new facility before it opened with Stacy Shepard. I just think it's how much it will honor our elders and then for our young people, the children, my grandkids, your grandkids that are gonna walk through this place and learn so much and, and have that opportunity to carry with them at an early age. Uh, maybe something that I didn't have so much of when I was a child. Yeah. So I think that's really exciting. Well, me too, and I'm excited to go see the rest of Let's the facility. <laughs> Let's go. Our next stop was with the Cultural Center's new chef, Amy Salcedo. What are you cooking, Chef Amy? Hi, hey. Uh -huh. I got some tanchi labona here for everybody to try. Oh, the tanchi looks awesome. Yeah, like that think... sugar nippy in there. Oh, thanks. You guys want to try it? Yes. Oh, well, of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to be here to have you to be able to work in the nation and be able to bring all of this to you guys. I love all the cultural food and I'm excited you guys try it. Chef Amy, so how did you learn to make well, I'll tell Tachi. you, cooking is such a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing it for a long time, and I grew up cooking in the kitchen with, <laughs> with, with, my, with my grandma and my mom. So it's like a really, it's a family thing. So for me, learning how to eat tanchi or making tanchi, cooking is a labor of love. And when you sit down with people, whenever they're eating, it's such an intimate experience. Yes. Like you're, you're opening up to communication, you're enjoying your food. And it slows people down. It slows you, you know, down and really brings does. your focus right mm -hmm. to you and to who you're with. Growing up, we always had um, mm. we always had family meals together. <laughs> good. It's a little warm, but uh, it, a little <laughs> awesome. lush pa, but uh, it's good. Lush pa, right? 
in our culture we have faith family and culture mm -hmm. and i feel like that comes full circle when you bring food in the mix and people come here to the cultural center they're going to have a chance to do that well we're this. so glad you're back <laughs> home i'm so glad that you're you're passionate about and your food by the way is awesome Thank your you tongue cheek is really good <laughs> and Wait so the fry bread, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, are we there i'm ready to try some fried bread before we left the cultural center, I want to take time to reflect on how our culture has persevered. We have a wonderful legacy of who we are as Choctaw people. It's interesting to go from the from 1830 to where we are today. I'm so thankful that our culture and history has persevered through all of this I think trials it's and tribulations. There's nothing that we can't survive. What does it mean to be Choctaw? It's such a personal question with so many answers. I think it's our self-determination, our own pride, and the care that we have for each other. I hope that you have found out what being Choctaw means to you.